Unlike any other place man had traveled before, space could provide him with nothing. It is a vacuum, devoid of every element needed for life. To send man into this nothingness, to protect him, it was first necessary to define him. What is the human machine? How does it function? What is the nature of its nervous system? Its respiration? Its circulation? Digestion? Sight? Hearing? Balance? Its endurance? gases to breathe should he take with him from Earth? What atmospheric pressure suits him best? Is it possible to give him a more efficient atmosphere for space travel than nature provides on Earth? The moon is 250 degrees hot in sunlight and 240 degrees below zero in the middle of its night. How long can a man bake or freeze? What protection will he need from this inhuman environment? What strains will the heart take when the pressure of gravity is removed from the limbs? What protection will the body need from sudden deceleration or acceleration? Man's sense of direction, speed, and balance are easily fooled. Can his mind be trained to ignore false signals from his senses? defining the physical man in absolute terms. Once we knew man's limitations, we could build him an artificial environment for space travel. 
Columbia, the command module, was a supreme achievement of the technology of its age. It was a mini planet, complete with its own environmental control system, telecommunications, electrical power, guidance, navigation, stabilization, propulsion, reaction control. It provided hot and cold water and removed carbon dioxide from the air. Three men could live here for more than a week, eat, work, sleep, shave, exercise, and listen to music. It was micrometeor proof, burn proof, and seaworthy, and it could tilt itself in any direction. In short, it was the most intricate and sophisticated machine ever made by man.